ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹೆಗ್ಡೇಜಿ ದಿ ಫೌಂಡರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ದಿ ಎಮ್ ಎಲ್ ಎ ಆಫ್ ಮೂದ್ ಬೆದ್ರಿ ಡಿಸೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಣಿ ಅಬ್ಬಕ್ಕಾಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ಥಲ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋದ್ ಬಿತ್ರಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಹೆಗಡೆಜಿ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮೀ ಹಿಯರ್ and of course on behalf of the school it gives me a great uh, chance a great chance to get inspired by no word can adequately describe the bravery of this great queen of tulu land rani abakka unbelievable uh, courage and the kind of conviction with which she fought for her people is not something we can uh, imitate or even copy and those were very difficult days and the poor portuguese were known to be ruthless colonial rulers the from among the various imperial rulers the british the dutch the the french and then the portuguese the spaniards spanish and the portuguese the portuguese were known for cruelty and to stand up against that is not a small task not once but seven times if i know i've just looked at the history it started off in 1525 and sequentially it's been happening after that 1525 i see the first time mangaluru port was attacked rani abakka was alerted by that incident and she started preparing her kingdom for it and the second attack came in 1555 and a particular admiral of the navy of the portuguese came to fight against her only because she refused to pay the tribute the money which had to be given and in that battle rani abakka fought like a tigress and successfully sent that admiral back but in 1557 again the portuguese came to mangaluru and completely destroyed mangaluru mangaluru by that time was a very active port a lot of spice trade was happening a lot of very very many merchant ships came there so mangaluru was plundered that was in 1557 but within a year the portuguese army again came only to display cruelty they killed men and women randomly anybody civilian common public old young they didn't care they plundered temples they burned ships and finally also they set the whole town to fire mangaluru was completely burnt down so after that in 1558 a fourth attack happened in 1567 and that attack was on ullal there again they were cruel showered destruction completely and rani abakka of course stood against it and guarded her fort guarded her people but worse was to come in 1568 an army general 
a Portuguese army general and also a navy assisting him came and the Portuguese viceroy had sent them, so they came with full authority and power. They captured the city of Ulal. They also entered the royal court of Rani Abakka. But she was clever, not only brave, like was uh, mentioned, she was very clever. She knew the strength and weaknesses of her enemy, so she escaped from there and she took refuge in a mosque. And after that, on the same night, she gathered around 200 of her soldiers and mounted an attack against the Portuguese all over again. She was not discouraged by defeat. She was not discouraged seeing the destruction. She was not discouraged by the cruelty of the Portuguese. She wanted to somehow defeat them. So she kept her spirit high. And in that battle, that general who came with the viceroy's strength was killed. Killed by Rani Abakka and her soldiers. And 70 Portuguese soldiers were taken into custody as prisoners. And many of them, many Portuguese, just went back. They retreated, seeing her power. The sixth attack happened in 1569. But in that attack, unfortunately, the Portuguese gained control over Mangaluru port. And not only that, they captured Kundapur, which was called Basroor, I think, at that time. So despite all this, Rani Abakka still wanted to keep her defense, if not go on an offensive attack. By which time, the treachery at home had begun. Openly, her husband was scheming against her. And with his help, more attacks happened. Furious battles followed. And in 1570, she formed an alliance with the Bijapur Sultans, that is the Bijapur Sultan of Ahmed Nagar, and also with the Zamorin of Calicut. So combined force, again, they opposed the Portuguese. There was a general which was sent, who was sent by the Zamorins from Calicut to fight on her behalf. If I get his name right, he was called, called Kutti Poker Markar. He fought on behalf of Rani Abaka because this entire Tutulu land and also south of Goa had to be kept out of the Portuguese. So when in this fight, the general of Samarin really destroyed the Portuguese and sent them back and restored the uh, Portuguese fort. But when he was returning, the Portuguese killed him, the general. But of, after all this, Rani Abbaka's own husband and his treachery, which has been there, which Pooja Swami um, Hegadeji mentioned, consistently he had been working against her, against her, his own people. The queen is fighting and the queen's consort was only fully full of treachery and working together with the enemy. She was arrested, taken, she lost the war, she was put in the prison, and even in the prison she fought till her death. Nothing could defeat her will to fight for the people of Tulu land. That is Rani Abaka. And that is why she is called a Baya Rani. She had no fear. Not because she was holding the sword and she was known to have used the fire arrow, Agnibana. She was the last one to use that. 
in Indian king, kings and queens history, she used that bana, agni bana also. So that kind of a bravery, if uh, for all the girls who are sitting here, what is remembered is Rani Abakka's bravery. And what is also remembered, and that too, of a man, is treachery. Treachery of the husband. Treachery of a Tulu man. When the Tulu woman is fighting, here is one, that black sheep Tulu man. All Tulu men are fighting along with the queen. And here is just that one man who let his own wife be captured by the enemy of the land. Enemy of all Tulu people. Enemy of all people who are fighting against an imperial rule. But the message that Rani Abaka gives us is you have to be brave, you have to be sure that you have Samaga, Nabe, the Danda to fight your enemy. But even more, you don't know where your enemy is, but even without letting them down, because she kept to the dharma that she was married to the man, she didn't do anything to him, but suffered because of his treachery. So that man is known for treachery and she is known for bravery. Of course, uh, Rani Abakka's stories are even now recited by Yakshaganas and folk songs all over Tulunadu. And this portrait is such a beautiful dedication to her, drawn by Mr. Shetty, I think. Look at the uh, Vasudev Shetty, Vasudev, Vasudev Kamath, sorry, Vasudev Kamath. The reason why I'm mentioning it is, he gave her a very correct local woman's image. But what I can't miss is the fire in that eye, the, the laser sharp look that she gives. The artist has beautifully captured that. In 2003, Government of India issued uh, a special cover to honor Rani Abaka. Very many dedications are made to her. And I'm happy to say, Prime Minister Modi, during Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, when India was celebrating 75 years of independence from the British rule, made it a point to document the history of every freedom fighter less known in this country, who were prior to 1947, who were prior to the well-known freedom movement of India, which was, of course, led by Mahatma Gandhi. But prior to that, in every part of India, there were men and women who were fighting all the imperial rulers. Some were fighting against the Dutch, some fought against the French, some, like Abaka Devi, were fighting against the Portuguese. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi very clearly had a team working on it to carve out the stories of bravery long back from 16th century, for 15th century, if there were any, get them all out. And in that process, Rani Abakka's heroic fight against the Portuguese has been documented. And in fact, Doordarshan was made to make a film and show it, and we all watched it. All ministers sat and watched it. It was also shown to all our members of parliament. In there, there is a hall in which all the members of parliament sit and have some meetings and so on. Every Tuesday when the parliament is in session, we meet in that. It is called Bala Yogi Auditorium. In that auditorium, Prime Minister made all the members of parliament watch that Doordarshan film on Rani Abakka. It was so well made. So, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav did not forget, did not at all forget Rani Abakka and her sacrifice. It was shown and it is a film worth watching. Many uh, members of parliament from other parts of India were really surprised that in the coastal area of Karnataka, 
there was this lady queen who fought against the portuguese on land and on sea she could plan for a navy flotilla which as was described earlier showed the prowess and also showed remarkable deception to make the portuguese frightened of her strength which she cleverly exaggerated because she was at that stage under severe threat so all this was captured in that film and i would like to tell you it is worth watching it there were two lakh events and programs that have been organized in the last two years to re recall the stories of rani abbakka and many others uh, who come from different parts of the country there was another queen uh, in south tamil nadu called velu nachiar equally brave and of course she had a slightly different uh, set of environment where she was fighting it but the point i'm trying to drive is many of these stories are not part of our history books we need to take them to every house every um, school and make it uh, necessary for our children to know it and in that regard a digital district repository digital repository has been compiled with 14500 stories in the context of azadi ka amrit mahotsav this digital repository at the district level is available and i wish and i will certainly request the district collector to have a school by school show of what is in it what is in the district repository and it also highlights places linked to freedom struggle and it is taken at the micro level puji hegde ji was right in saying rani i mean battle of panipat possibly also referred to by the postmaster general not just those kind of big names this repository which is digital district level repository has micro level details also which are made available we also made it ministry of culture also made it possible for amar chitra katha to publish three books on brave women of our freedom struggle it has very interesting anecdote and story of rani abbakka in it amar chitra katha was made to do it and in that rani abbakka story is there so prime minister modi has made sure the stories of rani abbakka are documented there is also another book amar chitra katha on women in power about women who were in the constituent assembly third tribal leaders of the freedom struggle are also becoming a part of amar chitra katha so through amar chitra katha a lot of these unknown stories are being made possible for children to know and understand in this context even as we talk about rani abbakka i want to take one minute and speak about freedom fighters from karnataka who are less known outside i'll just take the name they were very uh, very prominent in their fight rani chennamma of the rani of kitturu she had armed rebellion against the british also gangadhara of desh pande the lion of karnataka ns ns hardikar dr narayan rao kabbur rs hukkerikar yashodara dasappa and very many others in dakshin kannada district alone there are numerous unsung heroes numerous and they've all been documented in the azadi ka amrit mahotsav documentary the district level digital documentary and so on so in addition to rania bakka dakshin kannada i would like to take in this context the names of others 
There can be many more. I'm only taking limited number of names. You, Srinivas Malaya, who was known for framing the Indian Constitution along with very many other prominent leaders, inclusive of Dr. Ambedkar, father of modern Dakshina Kannada district, that's the title which is given to him. Karnad Sadashiva Rao, one of the first from Karnataka to volunteer to serve alongside Mahatma Gandhi in a Satyagraha movement. Hari Vishnu Kamath left ICS. He was in the Indian Civil Service, the British version of it, not the Indian Administrative Service. He left that ICS, which was a very powerful position to hold and a lot of money, a salary and comfort. He left it and joined the freedom struggle. He played a remarkable role in the Constituent Assembly. We remember him today in, this, in the context of talking about Rani Abaka. Umabai, Umabai Kundapu, another great woman who organized volunteers for the 1924 Belgaum Congress session. The freedom fighting movement, Congress movement as it was called, had people of all kinds of ideological background, backgrounds and uh, uh, lineage. They were all together in the freedom movement. And therefore, the Congress freedom movement moved from one part of the country to another so that they have every region taken along. So, one such a meeting in 1924 was held in Belgaum, and Umabai Kundapur organized women volunteers for this, and she was jailed for, the role in, for her role in civil disobedience movement, and later on appointed Karnataka Provincial Pratinidhi of Kasturiba Gandhi Memorial Trust in 1946. Now, I recounted all this only because Karnataka, Dakshin Kannada, have all got brilliant minds, brilliant, dedicated people who have worked to keep this country together. <laughs> Prime Minister Modi never misses an opportunity to highlight the importance of women and their role. No wonder the bill was passed. Of course, it has to go through the census, the delimitation, and post that, nobody can stop reservation for women from happening. People can question it. But once these two are done, and the census in all probability will happen in 24, post which the delimitation, and after that, the uh, women's reservation bill will come into force. But equally, as was referred earlier, it was during my time in defense, Prime Minister Modi clearly gave us an advice we want women to join armed forces. We want women to go through the signing school process so that they can get into the National Defense Academy and qualify for the officer level positions in the defense establishment. Today we have women. Today we have women flying the Rafale flying our own uh, Indian-made Tejas, Navy, some of the warships have Indian women recruited, and so is the army. So, in fact, I don't want to uh, impose a thought which is running in my mind off the cuff, and uh, I submit it in all my humility before Pujya Hegdeji. This region is known so much for educational institutions. Rani Abaka is an eternal inspiration for all of us. You should actually think of having a scenic school in her name in this area. Why do I get the feeling that the clap was very muted?
Rani Jhansi, Rani Lakshmi Bhai of Jhansi, Rani Abakka. They are all before us, inspiring us to be sure that we are committed for this country. Every woman of India should aspire to get some qualities from them, if not all qualities. We should dedica dedicate ourselves not just to follow the dharma, which is what you have, Pooja Hegreji here, he's a dharma dikari. <laughs> we should follow dharma, we should keep that at core of whatever we do. Every Indian, in fact, globally people realize the relevance of the eternal law, which is almost a cosmic law, which is dharma. It's the eternal principle. You cannot go against it. You will be drawn back to follow it. And you have the adhikari sitting here reminding us every day of what it means. But if that has to be followed and if that has to be intact and respected, you need the bravery of Rani Abhaka to protect the dharma. Because dharmo rakshati rakshita. Only if you protect dharma can you have dharma. So this land of the brave, the Tulu land, it's an ancient land. You know, I truly have goose pimples when I think of this land. Very ancient language. So many actually historical and archaeological study will know if they do it here, so much more about India's regional richness will come out. So one can of course talk about this for a very, very long hour, completely one hour, two hours, but I won't take more of your time. It, I'm indeed moved by the fact that you thought it fit that I should be here for doing this work. I draw a lot of inspiration from the valiant queen, Rani Abhaka. And I wish every one of you here would become the future Bakkas to stand for India. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Bharat Mata Ki Jai.